Welcome everybody to the very first episode of the Mitten Men Show. That's right, the Mitten Men. I am Brian, joined as always by... Hey everybody, it's me, Chris. And I'm Brian, as I've already said. Each week we're going to come to you on the Mitten Men Show. We're going to get things rolling pretty quickly right here. Am I right, Chris? Uh, you're absolutely right, Brian. What do we have in store for everybody? Well, we're, we got a bit of everything, really. We're going to do some, what, we're going to do some news stories. Yeah, we got a little bit of news. I think we got some, um, um, we got a lot, um, we have a uh, random stranger phone call interview, which is always fun. Yes, that'll be interesting. And we also have a special guest, which you're going to have to tune in to the very end of the episode to find out who it is. Am I right? I, I, I believe you're right. Is that so? It is so. We got Ooh. him. He is here. I can't spoil it yet. You'll have to listen to the end of the episode. But keep it tuned here to the Mitten Men. Well, I can't wait. I can't wait either. <laughs> As you know, every morning I get up and I watch at least eight hours of news before I start my day. So you have, so, two, you have two jobs then? I, yeah, I pretty much do. You, well informed. You have eight hours of news and then eight hours of work. <laughs> I, I guess you could say that. <laughs> Anyways, um, I kind of want to talk about the dead cattle. Dead cattle? Yeah, dead cattle devastation in the wake of Western fires. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've actually heard something about this. That sound, sounded pretty horrific, so... I bet you it smells delicious. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is just morbid. All right, what's the story? <laughs> so it turns out uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kolka... Col- I hope I'm saying it right, Kolka... Um, there was a fire in, uh, Ash Creek. Ash Creek, um, you know, it doesn't say Vermont. No, Montana. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. It's okay. <laughs> Breathe in. <sighs> Breathe out. Just give us the story. All right. All right, Brian. It turns out in, uh, Bullberg. 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 Bull- Bullborg. <laughs> Sounds like a Star Trek villain. Is this in Bull- Russia? No, actually, surprisingly not. It's uh, Montana. Might as well be Russia. River Holberg. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Cecil and Dolores Kolka, it turns out that they had a 390 square mile fire on uh, their acres. Um, their home was spared, but apparently... <laughs> the Kolka four- acres. Come <laughs> 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 Okay. I'm sure it was very traumatic for them. Yes, yes. Um, very dramatic. 400 of their cows were burnt alive, apparently. Oh. Um, it says here that their bodies were charred and bloated. <laughs> <laughs> God. Couldn't they have tried to maybe shoot some of them? I don't know. Am I asking too much? Like, was the fire... I guess the fire must have been coming on strong. If <laughs> I, 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 It had to have been. Um, well, gee, that's a very good question. <laughs> right? Well, because I, the only reason I say that is I heard stories of people were shooting cattle, like, as they were catching on fire out there, you know, to lessen the suffering, because they could stop the fire, but... <laughs> Everything burns, Brian. <laughs> um, yeah, hundreds and thousands of acres of grazing land has been burned so far with, um, it's pretty bad, this drought. Yeah, it is. They're saying $9 billion in damages. Gosh. And it's not even over. It's not even over. It's still going? I was I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess this week's the pig roast. Yep. <laughs> 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 you know, so, they're in for a real barn burner this week. <laughs> it's the fun game, everyone. <laughs> Colca Acres. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's it's go. To, let's go to a new story. New story. Um, new story. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You heard about that uh, Fort Hood shooting? Happened, I think, a couple summers ago, or maybe three summers ago. Who really knows? Yeah, yeah. I believe I heard it. Uh, you know, for the whole month that it was on TV nonstop. Well, they should have saw it coming. For one, they had their military psychiatrist, who is a Muslim, which is cool. It's America. We're diverse. Blah blah blah. But anyway, it turns out he went crazy and went and shot a few people up. Yeah. And uh, he was in court yesterday, and he has a beard. We all know it's Ramadan, and he's a Muslim. And, uh, well, the judge told him yesterday, uh, when you appear in court tomorrow, you better be shaven, or I will forcefully shave you. I I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. So, now, is this one of those things where it's just judge's discretion, where he can say, this is how it goes in my courtroom, you will shave? 
No, I believe there is a military rule. So, oh, it's a military tribunal, isn't it? So, being that he's in the military, apparently your rights that you once had before you were in the military is stripped away from you. Well, and yeah. you follow military law. That does apply to everyone in the military, not just... Is it even religion? Religion? I would... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, don't... Isn't that part of basic training is we just pretty much shave your head, right? And so your memory, like, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, as, I don't know. As far as the judge enforcing it, I don't know. I have, I guess, I have ethical issues of being forced to look a certain way. But in this case, the rules are the rules. Yeah, it's, Hassan says that it's an expression of his Muslim face. Is that I'm, so? I'm sure the military is going to make you cut it off. I thought it was the last of the Mohican thing. <laughs> well, it, it evolved from that. You see, the, <laughs> the punk rock movement took elements from the Native Americans. Okay. Nope, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> what um? What tribe? What? What tribe? What tribe? Oh, for punk rockers? I would say maybe uh, the probably Apache. the probably the Iroquois. <laughs> is it what's that? Was the Iroquois fighting the Europeans a lot? I don't know. I do know they fought man and a team of elves and wizards. What? Iroquois, Ur- right? You're talking about orcs. <laughs> I thought you were quoting from the Book of Mormon for a second. <laughs> I can see the confusion. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's a can of worms for another day. That's, yep. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure that'll be coming up in the next few months as the election ramps up. But yeah, blah, blah, blah. Hassan, he's 31. Uh, he's charged with... I said his name wrong. It's Hassan. Hassan. Uh, Hassan. Like... Whatever. <laughs> now, is that condescension, or are you really <laughs> supposed to pronounce it that way? Um, Hassan, he's 41. He's charged with 13 counts of premeditated murder and 32 counts of attempted premeditated murder in November in that tragic, tragic 2009 massacre. Yeah. Uh, shave your beard. It's the rules, and no one really has that much sympathy for you. I think they should shave his beard and his body and tar and feather him. <laughs> They don't. You should do that more often. People are <laughs> terrified. Have you ever been tarred and feathered, Brian? I have not. I've, I've, I haven't either. I, but I've seen it in movies. <laughs> the colonists used to be pretty fond of it. Yep. Yep. That's what the tea party is going to be calling for next. Tar <laughs> and feather him. That Obama. Tar and feather Obama. We don't need the tar. <laughs> we just bring the feathers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. <laughs> Next story. And so to do that, I'm going to eliminate every non-essential, expensive program I can find. That includes Obamacare, and I'm going to work to reform and save... <laughs> you know, there was a survey... Yeah, yeah. Did you uh, did you watch any of the Olympic games? Some of it started. Well, I thought they started tomorrow. They, they do start tomorrow, but apparently there are so many events, they start some of the lesser known ones, like a couple days ahead, just so they can fit it all in their schedule. Really? Yeah. Um, so naturally, it's the women's sports. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Oh, man. Oh. Anyway. What women's sports got? Soccer. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. You figure it would be a sport that no one watches that much. Like, like what? Like, uh... Checkers? <laughs> Are checkers in the Olympics? <laughs> they should be. Maybe chess. If Batman is. Chess in the Olympics would be cool. I'd watch That'd that. That would be interesting. I don't know if I could watch it. Oh, I've watched chess on TV before. Uh, I have not. I don't know if I should be proud of that or not, but I have. Was it raining outside? No, it was when, uh... I can't remember his name. He was taking on Deep Blue 2. <laughs> what? Was it Kasparov? Gary Kasparov? Was that his name? Deep Blue 2. Deep, yeah, it was that chess program. It was taking on the computer. It was man versus machine. The chess I match. I had no clue. That sounds like the sequel to Deep Blue Sea. <laughs> We're taking on the Russians with computers <laughs> now. 
<laughs> but anyway, before we get off track, where I was going with this, this uh, little Korean girl, this North Korean, she refused to take this, uh, the field because the Olympic, the guys up in the, uh, the techie room, they accidentally uh, replaced her North Korean flag with a South Korean flag. <gasps> yeah. Drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's just... Was that an American person? <laughs> We, no, we're terrible at our geography. It's probably like this looks like one of the Korean flags. <laughs> Put it out there. Hurry. Let's hope not. Why is everyone so fucking stupid? Speaking of Korea, um, Kim Jong, Kim Jong, what's his son's name? Soon. Kim Jong, I don't know, dude. Kim Jong Un. Anyway, he's married. Did you know that? <laughs> no. Yeah, it turned out that he was married back in two thousand nine. Really. Yeah, it's a fun fact. Oh, 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 yes, and Disneyland made an appearance at North Korea. Disneyland? Yes, he, somehow, they are probably illegally made, he had suits made up, like, it was more like a Disney on Ice performance he had in North Korea. Okay, so, <laughs> so this was one of those North Korean-sponsored events. <laughs> yep. So it wasn't really Disney going over to North Korea. No, of course not, no. <laughs> oh my god, I was... Designed... Put on these ice skates if you want to eat. <laughs> the, oh. the fat boy wants a show. You ever, you ever pay attention to North Korea? A little bit. They don't have snow plows. At all? No, uh, no. They make the people shovel the streets. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, that's terrible. Do they... <laughs> Is there incentive behind it? Or None whatsoever. Well, your point? life. Your life. <laughs> you can point. either shovel or die. Uh, that would suck. Uh, yeah, that's why people cry at the end of the summer. <laughs> well, it's the whole cult of personality thing there, too. I, mean, I suppose. Um, the rulers there are gods. Did you know... <laughs> You're absolutely right. And they're uh, authors, too. Did you know that? And movie makers. That's very true. Did you know, in all the libraries in North Korea, they are written by Kim Jong-il and his father, Kim Jong-sung, or whatever. Well, they were a divine presence on Earth. Would you need any other books? Well, he was born under a double rainbow, dude. And got a hole in one his first time golfing. <laughs> I believe every hole was a hole in one. <laughs> that takes skill. That takes leadership. That takes godlike powers. Yes. And famine. <laughs> Genocide. And rockets. <laughs> yes, lots of rockets that don't work. But it's fun to launch. And grand plaza dance shows. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Uh, oh man, what else have we got? What else have we got? Oh, oh, you ever go to uh, gallop.com? I do go to gallop.com. I, I random frequent that stuff. It's the one. Uh, it's the one polling site that I that I I would say I trust the most. That's, yeah, that or Fox News. Well, pff, always, Dude, always fair and balanced. We report, you decide. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Well, anyway, today in Gallup, uh, Barack Obama's approval rating is 47%, with a disapproval rating of 47%. Repeat that? <laughs> yeah. Barack Obama, his approval ratings today are 47%, with a disapproval rating of 47%. 47 and 47. 47 and 47. So the rest is undecided? I would guess so. Pretty um, it can't be good being under 50. Uh, George W. did it. During re-election? Yeah, in 04. Yeah, I suppose that's true. I mean, is, do they have a side-by-side -side approval of Romney right at the moment? Yes, yes, if the election was held today. Actually, Mitt Romney's at 46% and Obama is at a 47% with a one-point advantage. Uh, he jumped up a little bit from last week. Uh, on Sunday, he was down two points. Yeah, I saw that. It, it's just going to be that roller coaster like it is now until I say after the conventions, that's when uh, the polls are going to be really important. You might be right. But I think I think it's going to be close pretty much all the way through. I see once Romney picks a VP candidate, he's going to gain lots and lots of momentum. He will. And isn't the uh, RNC yep. first? Or the, yep, yep. Romney will have a bunch of uh, upswing after the convention, though. Wait, how so? But Obama usually does hit it out of the park with speeches. So. All the time, dude. He's like, well, I don't want to say that. Never mind. We're not going to go down there. Hey, he called himself LeBron one time. Did he really? Yeah, he did. He said, I'm LeBron, baby, before his speech. Like, yeah, to one of his, like, advisors. To be honest with you, I don't know who this man is. <laughs> no, for real. You know, one day he says, if I, I, if I ever have a son, he'd be like Trayvon Martin. Well, one day he's singing Al Green. He sounds like Al Green. 
And uh, what what did you just say a few minutes ago? That he called himself LeBron. Yes, he called himself LeBron. I don't know. Who is this guy? <laughs> How much do you really know about any president? Well, uh, that's a very good question. Yeah, just as much as you know about Obama. Um, did you know Lincoln was gay? <laughs> he was a log cabin Republican. <laughs> he, uh, I think that had a different meaning 150 years ago. I don't think it did. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. They weren't very discriminatory. That was kind of uh, the Republicans' thing at the time. Oh, no, no, no. Gladiators weren't either. <laughs> Are we going to go through a list of who was gay in history that was hiding it? I think we should. We'll have to say that for another day. That could be a long list. <laughs> Sally Ride. <laughs> for a name like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, like, to like, just go through a list of historical people <laughs> and debate if they were gay or not. Joan of Arc. <laughs> <laughs> Joan of Arc was a total butch. For sure. <laughs> All right. And Howard Hughes, he was deep in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> Milk jars deep. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, with... All right. All right. So let's talk about old Willard Mitt Romney for a second. <laughs> Willard. Well, yes, Willard. Everybody's favorite, Mitt Romney. <laughs> I'm Mitt Romney, and I'm running for president of the United States. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm not going to apologize for being successful. Everybody's got a price. I'm not concerned about the very poor. Everybody's going to pay. I like being able to fire people. Because the million dollar man. You can focus on the very poor. It's not my focus. Always. It's his way. <laughs> Corporations are people, my friend. Money, 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 money. I went in and gave it a real battle and went after it. Yeah, yeah, so I guess Mitt Romney went overseas starting his international tour. It's convenient enough that the Olympics have started and we all know he's got that fancy dancing horse. Yes, his dressage horse. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so uh, he did an interview with, um, I think it was NBC's Brian Williams, and he was... Explaining, apparently London has some security shortcomings. It's always uh, interesting to hear one robot interview another. It's very interesting. <laughs> I, I always thought of when two robots got really close together, sparks would fly. Brian but... Williams. All right, anyways, what did, old, <laughs> what did old Mitt have to say to Brian? Oh, oh, he said that the security was disconcerting. disconcerting. I don't even know. I don't even know what that means. D I S C O N C E R T I N G. This. Hmm. <laughs> I just, hi, I'm Mitt Romney, and I coined the phrase. Phrase? Phrase. <laughs> phrase. Discurting. 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 Oh, disconcerting. Dis- <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he's worried about the security at the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we all know they have, like, what, 18,000 troops? Yeah, it was fifteen to 18,000, something like that. Somewhere around there. They got, like, surface-to-air missiles that are patrolling the sky, not to mention swift boats all over the London River. Wow. Um, I know 007's on hand, um, 006. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. <laughs> 006? Oh, no, he's going to double-cross him. Uh, well, they signed an agreement. They gave him some amnesty. Oh, okay. So... It's gonna be it's gonna be cool. But anyway, uh, Mitt Romney's there, and um, he well he's got a horse in the Olympics, right? That's true. Yeah, he does. The horse's name like Rafikia, Rafshell. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, horses always have weird names. I, I will never understand how horses get named. It's always something to do with their bloodline, right? And then if it's a racing horse, it's just nonsensical. Yeah, uh, something like that. Purple Prancer. Purple Prancer. <laughs> Red neck Fred. <laughs> May I have I another? That was the popular. Yeah, there you go. Um, triple stamp, Jesus, double stamp. Double stamp? Triple stamp, double stamp. That was. Oof. You didn't know about that horse? I didn't know about that horse. Oh, well. You need to be in the know, my friend. <laughs> well, apparently so. Whatever happened to names like uh, War Admiral, uh, Sea Biscuit. Sea <laughs> Biscuit. No, Sea Biscuit would fit in today. That's pretty nonsensical. It would be awesome. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is my horse, Luscious Lava. <laughs> She's like a red paint or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm starting to think that Mitt Romney might be the Lord of the Rings. 
Lord of the Rings. Yeah, Lord of the Rings, dude. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I'm following the analogy. The Olympic rings. You know, he was. Oh. <laughs> if, if, let me, I'm saying this. If, if it wasn't for Mitt Romney, the 2002 Winter Games would never happen in Utah, Salt Lake City. We should be thanking Mitt Romney for bringing the Olympic Games to the United States. Well, screw that, because Canada beat the U.S. in hockey for the gold. I don't watch hockey. Well, I do, and that one still stings. It doesn't matter, dude. It stings. So I was thinking about Olympics and Mitt Romney and his horse. And how do you think he brought his horse over? <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. Was that, was that Mitt Romney's dog, Seamus? <laughs> Oh my gosh, thanks to Tim, we have Seamus here. <laughs> well, there goes Seamus. I hope he's all right. I think he's all right. If that's, I'd hate to see how the horse got to the Olympics. Well, we all know. On the roof of the plane. A 747. <laughs> it was a sight. I heard they had cranes. All kinds of tow wire. Tow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at a loss. I am too. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back with Random Friend of the Week right here on the Mitten Men. Hello, this is the CDC with, with a public service announcement. Always, always wear a condom. Always have marital sex. If not, you will die of AIDS. And not just some little AIDS. Full blown, full blown, blown AIDS, AIDS, AIDS. Everyone will die, die of AIDS. This is the CDC with, with a public service announcement. Always, always wear a condom. Always have marital sex. sex. If not, you will die of AIDS. And not just some little AIDS. Full blown, full blown, blown AIDS, AIDS, AIDS. Everyone will die, die of AIDS. Well, this is the CDC with a public service announcement. Well, this is the CDC with a public service announcement. Well, this is the CDC with a public service announcement. Well, this is the CDC with a public service announcement. Well, it is that time. It is that time for the random person interview. Yes, this is my favorite part of the show. This should be interesting. We're just going to pick a person at random, call them Com- up on Skype. Completely random. I get blindfolded. <laughs> you are blindfolded. It helps you reach your inner chi for interviewing, am I right? <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right, Brian. All right, so I'm picking a name here as we look. It looks like the name's Matt. Matt. Matt from Michigan. I believe so. Matt, are you there? Hello? Who is this? This is Brian, Matt. This is Chris. Matt, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Excellent, excellent. Good, so. Matt, how's the weather out there? That's a good icebreaker. Well, you know, I can see lightning outside right now. Oh, really? It's very It's coming our way. Does, Does lightning scare you, Matt? A little bit. More of the thought of being asleep when a tornado comes scares me, but... Well, you could be taken to the land of Oz. It'd be all right. <laughs> How do you feel about going to the land of Oz? I don't like that idea. For some reason, I don't like the idea of seeing uh, the Scarecrow or the Iron Man, whatever his name is. I think it's Tin Man. <laughs> the Iron Man is in Marvel Studios. It's Oz. I thought they were making a new Oz anyways. <laughs> Are we talking about the prison show? Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, that's a... Yeah, are we talking about the prison show? The prison, it wasn't it Oz? Yeah, it was. It was Oz. What do you, what do you remember from that prison show? <laughs> you can't believe you asked me that question. Well, I answered truthfully. Um, the violence. That's it. There was violence. There was, was a lot, a lot, lot of, violence. of violence. There was also a lot of other stuff. Yes, Chris, there was a lot of gay sex involved in that show. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. Fuck you. <laughs> Just let it flow, Matt. Just let it flow. <laughs> no, it was good. Well, it was good. <laughs> Oz, I, I, I was a avid fan. I didn't watch it really though. I didn't. I knew about it, but I didn't have HBO. I've never seen it, but I've heard there's a lot of gay sex on it. Yeah, my younger brother used to masturbate to it. <laughs> True story. I remember my mother catching him jerking off to us. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> now I'm just thinking about Dorothy, like him jacking off to that. <laughs> That's I guess it works both ways. I didn't realize this conversation was going to go in the gutter. 
<laughs> so enough about us now. Going in the gutter, but that's okay. <laughs> what was that? It says going completely in the gutter, but that's okay. That's good stuff. We can roll with it. So, uh, what do you do for a living? Um, I just got done working. I am a bellman. Ooh, the what? The what? What? I am a bellman. What's the story? Flying high tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Where they pull the levers repeatedly. <laughs> Try to get three tomatoes. Sometimes you get a good tomato, sometimes you get a green tomato. Yeah, uh-huh. We went with tomatoes on this one. Where it was headed. Tomato, tomato. Okay. I like potatoes. No. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so do you like your job? It's okay. Make good money. <laughs> Pay the bills. Keep the... Keep people happy, I guess. I don't know. Well, when you, when you say you keep a lot of people happy, that means uh, you meet a lot of girls. I didn't know this conversation was going to be about my personal life. Well, so yeah, I'm okay. going to yeah, not, no, it's not about your personal life. Yes, hi, Sadie. No, I'm just saying, if I was a bellman, you know, and there were women, I would really, you know, give them the extra service, if you know what I mean. All right, I'm moving along. <laughs> well, from the, just take a note, Matt. The sex conversation. Thank you. <laughs> so, Matt, wildfires, pretty bad, huh? Yeah, they are terrible. Chris is one in pretty... Colorado, like, gone already? Is it burned to the ground? I didn't think the whole state burned to the ground. I just want to know if the fire stopped. We have no idea, Matt. I don't know what that means. One of the last <laughs> was, How do you feel about the, uh, did you hear about the, uh, what was that called? The, uh, Volberg? We talked about it earlier. <laughs> that Volberg, uh, Montana? <laughs> Volberg. Yeah, did you hear about all the cattle burning up in one of the forest fires? Yep. Terrible. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> you, are you choking over there? You okay? Are you freaking out a little bit? <coughs> oh my. Yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. <laughs> so, okay. that didn't make any sense to me. Probably because I wasn't really paying attention. Well, what are you doing? I am so intrigued on my dog right now, watching her chew a bone. Matt, are you on drugs? <laughs> Not at all. Are you sure? Did, if did you have like a phantom a drug? Pup? Then I am a drug addict. What? <laughs> are you talking to us or, or your dog? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. <laughs> Careful! I don't want him to choke again. Yeah. <laughs> Are you alright over there? Yes. Yes, I am fine. So, okay, work's cool, you like work. What do you do for fun, Matt? What, 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 what does Matt do? Well, recreation's not really one of my fortes, because I don't go out much. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, what I do for fun... You must read a lot of books. Not a big reader. Play a lot of video games. Eh, not pretty... Nope, don't play too many video games. I sit around and do nothing. <laughs> wow, this is awesome. <laughs> I don't know why I went that direction. How do you feel about that, man? I think the drugs are taking over. Your speech is impaired. <laughs> All right, well, man, it was good talking to you. Good luck, Matt. Good luck out there, buddy. Hey, get off the drugs. <laughs> Nothing wrong with sitting around, man. Can't hurt anybody. Okay, I'm fine now. Alright, man. Who else do you care about? You too. <laughs> well, Chris, I don't know about you, but we've had some fun so far. I had a blast. The interview with Matt there, he's an interesting fella. I I think he's a stoner. I, he might be. I hope. I he, don't know. I hope he's responsible. Did, I hope so too. Did he have a dog? Did we establish that there was a dog there, or was well, it just all in his head? Well, he said there was a dog, but I'm not for sure. Uh, this could have been that ganja. Well, anyways, we hope you've been uh, enjoying the show so far. Uh, I'd like to tell everyone if you, well, not if you want to. We hope you do. Send us some fan mail or even some hate mail. We'll read it on the show, and it's easy. I personally like hate mail myself. 
Yeah, send the hate mail. We'll read it. We'll read it and we'll respond to you. We'll respond to your hate. But it's yeah. easy. The email address is the mitten men, all one word, T H E M I T T E N M E N at gmail dot com. I believe you can also follow us on Twitter, isn't that so? You can follow us on Twitter. Pretty easy. At the mitten men. Send us love, send us hate. We'll respond to it all. Even the hate. Even the hate. Only in America. Only in Michigan. Only in the Mitten State. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay That's tuned right. for the end of the show. Uh, we have a very special guest coming up. Oh, I can't wait for this. I can't wait either. Oh, I'm so excited. The anticipation is killing me. <laughs> Keep it tuned to the Mitten Men. <laughs> I will. Everybody knows that it makes no sense that you send a kid to the emergency room for a treatable illness like asthma. They end up taking up a hospital bed. It costs when if you they just gave you gave them treatment early, and they got some treatment and a, a breathalyzer or an inhalator, not a breathalyzer. I haven't had much sleep in the last forty-eight hours, so. All right, so Chris, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, the Dark Knight Rises came out this week. I did hear about that. Well, yeah, everyone knew about it. Everyone but and <laughs> everyone and their mother. How many times have you seen it? Um, uh, three times, no two. Two, yeah, me too, to admit. But to give us further insight and his review, we have our special friend Barney Frank on the line. You mean Congressman Barney Frank? Congress, retired Congressman Barney Frank, right? Openly gay, retired Congressman, now married. Barney well, Frank. he told me that he had plenty of time to watch Dark Knight Rises, and I said, Barney. Give us a review. That's fantastic. Without any further ado, here's our friend with his review of The Dark Knight Rises, Barney Frank. So glad to be here, guys. Thank you so, so very, very much to be here. Uh, Brian, Chris, it's, it's great to be with you guys again. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, glad you're here, Barney. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm here too, but I asked you, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine, oh, Congressman. Did I stutter? <laughs> I'm sorry, Congressman. I'm doing fine. I'm doing good. That's, that's good to hear. It's good to hear. Myself, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah, The Dark Knight Rises was uh, wonderful. It was great. I, it was probably one of Christopher Nolan's best movies I've seen since since Insomnia. So, The Dark Knight Rises was everything and more, friends. It was, it was, it was, it was fr- Christopher Nolan... Oh God, Christopher Nolan, he's, let me tell you, he's one of the best directors Hollywood has ever, ever produced. You like Christopher Nolan, do you? I, do I like him? I want to fuck him. <laughs> Are you okay, Brian? I, is it okay that I say that? That's fine. Okay. All right. Are you all right over there? I'm good. I'm good. Sorry, you just you caught me off guard with that one. It, it happens, Brian. As you know, my career in the house, I would shoot from the hip and I wouldn't filter anything. Not even my sexual orientation. Oh, Christopher Nolan, he's a great director. He's directed many, many great films like, uh, what was it? Uh, the Following, Memento, yep. uh, Prestige. Uh, <laughs> Steve, I'm good, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude. This is awesome. All right. <laughs> <sighs> so yes, uh, Memento, uh, Prestige. Um, what, there's insomnia, um... I think you're repeating yourself. I right. probably am. It's, I'm right in the house. It's okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, The Dark Knight, it starts off with, um... Oh, gee. Uh, we got, uh, Bruce Wayne. He's, uh, locked in... It's been eight years, he's been locked in Wayne Manor. This is when the sultry yet delicious Anne Hathaway playing Selena Kyle. Oh my god, man. Selena was to die for. If I wasn't gay, I would fuck her beyond no belief. Anyway, Selena Kyle comes in, right? Like a cat burger. And uh, she gets into Bruce's safe. <laughs> <laughs> Barney, you don't, you don't have to tell us scene for scene what happened. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, Barney. I Well, I, I never mind. <laughs> so, okay, okay. Anyway... The sultry cat woman makes the uh, the Batman come out of retirement. Why all of this is going down, the mysterious yet very scary Bane is doing a 3,000 feet in the air airplane heist. 
It's so bizarre, fans. It's so it, bizarre. It was out of this world. It was truly out of this world. Yeah, I was really impressed by it. Um, what are you talking about, Chris? You haven't said anything for the last 30 fucking seconds, and now you just pitch it. <laughs> Sucker party. <laughs> yeah, just, shut the fuck up. Chris. Yeah. Just, you hanging in there, buddy? I'm um, all right. I don't know about this guy. Yeah. Okay, party. I don't know review. Uh, anyway, so Bane does this death-defying uh, airplane heist, and the fire rises. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the fire rises. You'll, if you haven't seen the film, see it. You'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, so, no, I'm just... Um... <laughs> so, yeah, what, the Bane comes to Gotham. Batman comes out of retirement. Shit goes down. Anne Hathaway's in a sleek suit. Batman gets broken. He rises out of some monk prison. I don't know. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah. It, it's everything you want. If you want action, if you want comedy, if you want steamy, sexual, sensual scenes, look elsewhere. Um, but it, it's a great movie. It's a real shoot 'em up So, what is your ranking system, Congressman Frank? Star, a star ranking or oh yeah um, let's see I do a uh, let's see the Frank family star rating is normally five stars so um, let's see I gave Magic Mike five with if I wish I could give him six but let's see the Dark Knight Rises would probably get on a Barney Frank star system um, five and a half all right. Well, thank you, Congressman Frank. No, uh, thank you, Brian. And Chris, Chris, yeah? Thanks for shutting the fuck up. No problem, Marty. Wow. Well, think, the kid's an idiot. I don't know where you found this guy. It's okay. He's, you know, we're just getting started. Uh, we'll be okay, Barney. I don't think you will. You want If you want this show to go further, fire the fuck out, Chris. Okay. Uh, thank you, Congressman Frank. Hey, no problem, Brian. Take care. We'll see, we'll see you again. I almost start talking like you. What, what's that? You threw me off. I almost start talking like you guys. <laughs> well, it happens. What's the saying? Birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> we'll see you next time. All right. Take care, Brian.